Hello there, it's Mike. And Katie. It's episode 195. The long-awaited end of spooky season. This week on Cup of Rad. Hey everybody, we're back. With some weird voice, I don't know. (laughs) It's been so long, eh? Uh... (laughs) I don't know what happened. So I, I don't, I mean, we, we were doing like so good and then all of a sudden like chaos happened and a lot of things, a happened. a lot of things happened. Halloween happened. Yeah. That which threw off our schedule. Adding and in also that I was applying for uh, another job. Yeah. We had the uh, resume prep and, and then I had interviews. Uh, so it was sort of, uh, uh, oh, I think there was a new sickness in there. We just had all sorts of things. <laughs> Was yep. there a sickness? Oh yeah, you didn't feel well. It's been chaos. No, but and it, was mainly, it was mainly it was mainly like the others. Okay, so, I thought. But no. So. Yeah, it just was really busy. Yeah. Like got crazy. No, I remember. I'm, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not crazy. I'm not saying you're crazy. I just was like. No, nope. always has to be. Right. But 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 someone also wanted to finish something very special and near and dear to her heart. Her latest fandom. Whoa, she she's We're so excited. She's far. so excited about talking about the the two parter that she, well, you know, I couldn't. She I couldn't she fit, even I, I couldn't just was looking at Hot Topic season. and seeing all the merch. Lies. <laughs> you heard it Blasphemy. here, folks. Blasphemy. You heard it here, Libel. folks. <laughs> Slander. Slander. Libel's written. <laughs> Slander. It's gonna show up as libel town too, isn't it? <laughs> Nope, he lies. So one thing uh, that's different with you was uh, testing this out. You got some change up on your. Uh, oh yeah, that was also system. part of it, right? That was part of it because now he's got these lovely rubber bands in his face. So yeah, I got metal in my face now. Yeah, I thought the plastic was bad enough, but now I've got like constant metal poking my gums. It's super fun. Not cool. Not cool. Rearranging. Your I, face, I, you I know? don't. I don't recommend ever going in for braces. It was a dumb idea. It was a mistake. Mistakes are made. <laughs> just deal with that crooked tooth, man. He, just deal yeah. with it. Because <laughs> it's just a carcophony of problems. The the pain that came that from when they would clean clean that and have to like reef them apart to clean no, it. No, but you know what? You smile better now. Yeah. I I mean a massive difference. Um. Not many people would have seen his crooked teeth if you've ever seen him smile or no, because I always kept that lower. But I've seen that, and uh, it's it has worked wonders. It has definitely done its job. It's just then it just uncovered other issues. Yeah, (laughs) with your jaw and all that. But I still think. I mean, I got my jaw refixed and my everything, and it just went back in place. So I still think at some point, like. It's just inevitable. I don't know if this <laughs> what you're doing is going to be worth anything. Your teeth are straight. That's all. Yeah. So. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Totally worth it, man. Right? Totally yeah. worth it. Another 11 weeks like this before they do something else to my face. Yeah. Maybe. It took me a bit to actually talk because it was really hard to, to talk at first. So. Yeah. Uh, but you're. Oh, we could call you Trap Jaw. Uh-huh. <laughs> that brings me a weird amount of joy. That's. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're actually trying a beer tonight. We are. Uh, it is uh, Dead Frog. Uh, and it is a vanilla coffee porter. And the reason why we were interested in trying it is because uh, the Spent Grounds uh did uh coffee for it if you remember way back when when we used to talk about spent grounds on here all the time um so dead frog brewery is a local brewery and yeah they collaborated with spent grounds to add coffee to them yeah a rich and creamy porter with flavors of fresh roasted coffee and hint of sweet vanilla so we're gonna we're gonna give this a taste right now it is 473 milliliters of strong beer it says well we're gonna go for it we're gonna sips at the same time so dead air it's beer and coffee yeah huh it is good 
Still waiting for the vanilla to hit, though. You can smell the vanilla more than you can taste it. <laughs> sip, 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 sip. I'm just going to sit here and just start pounding drink back, trying to let you taste it. It's not a bad tasting one. Honestly, it's not as strong. Yeah, I was expecting it to be stronger, I think. Mm. Um, not being familiar with porters at all, I very well could have just been over exaggerating what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, just caveat on that one. If there's anyone's like a beer connoisseur, um, just the way it smelled like it's still heavier than I normally would drink. Oh, yeah. Of course. Um, but yeah, I was expecting it to be a little bit more full bodied than it is. And I, I'm, I'm happy with it. Not me yeah. that way, because I'm I don't really want to meal in a can. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, it's, it's good. It's definitely a, you know, enjoy like right now, not enjoy with something. No, no, you're not eating anything with this. Well, maybe maybe like Chocolate. a dessert. Maybe yes. a cheesecake or something. Yeah, some sort of dessert. Like, that would make sense. Okay. It's a dessert beer. Yeah. Cake. I mean, better than a breakfast beer, so. <laughs> <laughs> breakfast beers are only available for... Um, camping? Camping. Uh, we don't even have breakfast beers for camping. Not anymore. <laughs> that was something you did. <laughs> way, 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 way back then. Yeah. Early 20s. Young and stupid. Yeah. No, more than early 20s. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. So, um, spooky season has ended. Yeah, we gotta we gotta wrap this whole vampire bloodsucker uh, yeah fiesta. No up. more vampires for 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 ever. Forever. <laughs> Not true, but no, but almost. Um, so we watched some more vampire movies. We did. We did check out some more vampire movies. There's actually uh, one movie in here that isn't a vampire movie. That is true. So we did you break want, down. You wanted, Let's you wanted, get that one. Yeah. So, so uh, at 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 my uh, beer slinging job, I uh, we had had a Halloween party, and uh, little Missy was having a good old time. That was one of the reasons why we also got delayed on this. Yeah. So I we missed out on my Saturday night Twilight because <laughs> of a Halloween party fiesta. Yeah. <laughs> I almost said fiasco. Which <laughs> fiesta. It was amazing party party is what it was. <laughs> Uh, so, so many hours of drinking by the, I was working. Yeah. <laughs> by the time we got home and all that and costumes off, it was like 2 a.m. Yep. 2 30. I think we kind of went to bed. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was, that was late for us. <laughs> um, well, we being s- that I was off shift at 9 30 <laughs> <laughs> and then we slept until 11 approximately mm. which is why i was not hung over and it was magical yeah i was so i that was like an achievement right there well especially because the cats didn't wake us up the kid didn't wake us up the kids yeah, slept the until kids 11 slept too uh it was amazing uh so yeah so we we well, we did gravitate firmly to the couch uh and we found something that we could watch as a family and that was uh wendell and wild yeah, uh, it was uh, directed by uh, Henry Selick, uh, and he directed Coraline and also uh, Nightmare for Christmas and Monkey Bone. Yeah, so it's a stop motion uh, claymation. Yeah, so uh, this was originally a novel that he would have been writing with somebody else. And then uh, Jordan Peele came in and helped him finish up the script. Uh, it was a Netflix original. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a, it's a stop motion, uh, adventure mm-hmm. with the idea that this girl has demons with names. Yeah. Wendell and wild played by key and peel. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, key, Michael. key, Michael key and Jordan peel. Yeah. <laughs> I went there. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's this young girl. She loses her, her kid, her kid. Oh my goodness. She loses her parents when she's young, like yeah. seven, um, in a car accident and, um, blames herself for it and goes down the, the traumatic spiral as one would 
expect, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she shows up. Um, she she kind of goes through the juvie system and she's back um, in her old town at a Catholic school for reform. Basically, they're trying to take in kids, girls to help out. And her old town has completely fallen apart. It's almost like started as a spiral. Well, because there was a brewery parents, fire. Yeah, her parents death that uh they kind of started everything and, and uh, everyone lost their jobs. And you, you see this one big corporation is basically buying the town. Yeah. To and turn it into a prison. A private prison. And uh, so it's about her, you know, having to wrestle with the idea of not being responsible for her parents' death. Um, letting go of that guilt and being able to... she you know, She's desperate to try to get a hold back her parents. And so she ends up... Uh, making a, a deal with the demons yeah. to try to bring them back and everything that happens and her trying to open up to people again. And it's, it was really well done. Yeah. It, it was a sim, it was much as it sounds like it was a complex story. It was a pretty simplistic story. Cause it's a very simple principle in yeah. it. You know, the idea of loss yeah. and what someone would go through the trauma that they deal and go through to get it back, realizing that you can't, and you have to work through the trauma yeah. and work through that grief. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it, I really did enjoy it. I was it was a fun style of animation. Mm-hmm. And I also loved the diversity that was within the film. Oh, yeah. The fact that there was tons of different ethnic backgrounds for a lot of the characters. Uh, there was also, you know, uh, different genders and whatnot throughout it. Mm hmm. Uh, and expression wise and everything. And I think it was really cool to see that in, in a, in a movie that was geared towards, it was PG 13. So it wasn't super kid ish, but, but it still deals with demons and death. Yeah. And that's so why. The, so the material itself, if it was all light and fluffy, and then you could tell that the rating was based on the gender expression, I'd be a little bit more frustrated, mm-hmm. but it, I can easily see why it's PG-13, yeah. you know? Um, but I, I liked with that, though, that it was part of the story and it was an important part of the story, but not um, flying its flag about it. It was it was just another person yeah. dealing with the same problems, the same issues that would happen to everyone else. Yeah. I like that it wasn't brought into an attention as an unnecessary, like, selling feature mm-hmm. about oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, but that's the way to normalize it, was, it. That's the way to make exactly. it make sense. And, and I and, and I like that it was just a part of the film. part of the the film, right? Yeah, and and I I really, but I, I you can tell when that it's still so infrequent because it was like, oh whoa, that's that's actually happening. Like, yeah, how cool is that? Yeah. Um, and I love this the style. She was very edgy. There was a lot of good humor about it, especially with Key and Peel. Um, they played their characters really really well. Um. You know, there's a there was so much emotion and and heartwarming aspect, mm-hmm. and you know, I also really enjoy that there was a pretty clear bad guy in this. Yep, uh, the corporation was evil. There was a from, great message from, from it. Yeah, from beginning to end, they never had a gray area. They were always portrayed as conniving, manipulative, yeah. and evil. Yeah, and and I like that a lot. Yeah, because that seems to have disappeared so yeah. much, right? And it was at the same time stating a message Mm -hmm. that I think is a real world thing. It's not even just like gently said it's straight out like private prisons are terrible. Yeah. (laughs) Well, yeah. Cause their whole business plan was like, well, we're going to take them from these wayward homes and make it that they never have rehabilitation. Yeah. And, and then they can just ship them down, down the hill to the prison. Yep. And I'm like, Oh God, that, that is exactly why private prisons are a problem. Yeah. Is because they have no interest they need whatsoever. To make, they need inmates to make money. Yeah. Right. Like, so why would you ever not want people to be inmates? Yep. Right. So, um, kiddo seemed to really enjoy it. Yeah. Um, it was, he didn't seem to get bored or anything mm-hmm. like that. And he also didn't freak out, which is a bonus. Cause sometimes that some of the, he really does not like Coraline. Still won't uh, even try it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, but yeah, uh, so it was definitely something that I think is, is, it was a worthy, uh, staple in it. I, I, I do feel that the animation was a lot more simplistic. So, um, there were a few things that bugged me a bit with the fact that 
there was a clear lines on the face for the puppets, mm. right? Where you could see where they pull out the face plates, right? Um, it's amazing what and it was just eyes it was just things that but I it was can't. it was part of the design right they made all of them they all had you could see the lines down there from oh, their nose okay. and all that right and it just compared to say watching like say like Coraline or like Paranorman where everything was is Paranorman's it's just phenomenal like super fluid or even like Kubo like the Laka stuff right or even the Disney stuff for um with Nightmare and and Frank and Weenie or even um, James and Giant Peach. Yeah. Right. Like all this stuff is w- way more fluid. So you could tell this was done more on a shoestring budget mm. for their puppeteer puppets. Yeah. Right. So they had to figure out instead of building all new puppets, they had to really figure out how to make. Them yeah. Most. And then it was like they didn't airbrush out the 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 lines to, to kind of like. So that that was sort of my biggest gripe was that like it felt like the the talent that was in it Mm -hmm. it should have been a bigger budget almost yeah right to to really polish it up in some areas because some of the like the animation itself was still fluid and looked beautiful it was just those like finer design choice ideas they left behind with uh, i feel like jordan peele was doing something fun yeah just outside of what he's been doing himself yeah you know where yeah he played a demon but they they weren't really evil they were also don't dealing with their own trauma with their dad and everything like that and trying to find their own way. So it was kind of cool because they had their own story as well. And, uh, it was interesting. The demons weren't the, weren't the bad guys. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. right? And that's what I thought was cool is it wasn't, um, it was very clear. These are the bad guys Yeah, and they stayed the bad guys. It didn't turn around anything else. Right. So, yeah. So yeah, I would highly recommend it if you haven't already seen it. It's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it was, it was Wendell and wild. It was fun. Check it out. Okay. So back to the blood sucking fiends. (laughs) Uh, so we got to check out with the family. Buffy, the vampire slayer. Oh, the yeah. original 1993 uh, classic uh, <laughs> of, of the tale of the cheerleader turned vampire hunter, vampire slayer uh, that spun off the TV show. Uh, and this was fun to watch because it, it was something that was so long ago. Yeah. Right. And being that it wasn't a huge movie, too, like it was like a it was a budget, you know, tiny little like kind of thing. Uh, and it was very apparent that it age. was a very from right from the beginning. What a cheap budget it was with the credits. Yeah. It looked yeah. like a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kiddo was even like, what have I done? What are we watching? Why are and we why? doing this? So it was on Disney Plus, part of the whole like Fox stuff that they've added on yeah. to it. Again, it was only PG thirteen. Now, one thing I can say is it's not a great movie. Yeah. But what I can go on is it's a pretty good step up for kids that don't want to watch, you know, hocus pocus and um that kind of like Disney Channel Halloween movies. Well, because when you look, say, on Disney Plus, the Halloween movies, it was Hocus Pocus or it was a bunch of teen, like the, the TV show movies. Yeah, the movies. Disney Channel stuff, Disney right? Channel stuff. And then it was horror, full on horror movies. Yeah. Like, that was about it. There was, there was nothing in between, yeah. right? So this is still goofy enough that for kids that don't want to necessarily get into full on horror. Yeah. Uh it's still accessible enough to be a bit more like, oh, they're fighting vampires. Haha, <laughs> that's kind of funny with some jokes. Yeah. So I think that's why this would have also hit so well back in the day mm-hmm. because it was like that step up kind of thing. But like you look at it and it's rated PG-13, but I look at it and go like, that's like a G-rated movie now. <laughs> there's no blood. There's no yeah. like there's no. The s- only thing really, there was a few jokes about sex. Yeah. But it was so minimal and it was a lot of it was more off off to the side or innuendo wise. So yeah. Then it wasn't if you didn't know what they were talking about, you wouldn't have gotten the joke. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, 
And Kiddo, was, I, I thought it was hilarious how many times he's like, people actually talk like this? <laughs> what is happening? As why, if. Oh why, my God. Why are, why are they talking like this? Yeah. He was very concerned with the... I tried to play it up and tell him that that's how they all sounded. Right? <laughs> What are you talking about? That's what happened in the 90s. Yeah. This is a snapshot. This is a uh, a documentary. Yeah. Of 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 90s. Ugh. But like, well, you could tell too with like the the old dramatic retelling of like the past slayers and stuff like that. They look like a play and it was all like Yeah, it totally did. Oh, I was it's... I was I was just like, it was what is this so bad? It was fun. Yeah. But then you can see why then the TV show took off because the TV show was actually darker than the movie. Yeah. And it was on network. Well, I was I mean, as much as it was. Well, the other thing was um, the the trainer guy. Don Sullivan. Don Sullivan's character. Um, he was creepy mm -hmm. because here he is just staring at her. Yeah, he was, was like, very quiet. The drama yeah. of this all like. You're trying, you're trying to be dramatic, but it's so bad. Mm -hmm. It just comes across like you just want to laugh about it. Yes. And then it's like, dude, okay, you just snuck into the high school and you're staring at her as she practices her cheerleading half-dressed. Yeah. And you don't think anything's wrong with right. this? What? Um, yeah. And I thought, but all of that, though, as much as it was, but it was really sad when he died still. Like, that was still really yeah. sad. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 I know I kept fighting on it. I don't know why I kept fighting on it about watching it. I'm glad we did watch it, though, because it was an, a good experience. Yeah. Um, But it was, yeah, it's definitely a product of its oh, cheap time yeah. right there. Like, it's, it's, oh, I remember, too, uh, when uh, Paul Rubin's character dies and he goes on that long, e ah, ugh. oh, that was terrible. His that every, was amazing. I know, but it was terrible. It was amazing. But every time that his character was on screen, it was like, oh my god, he's the best part of that movie. He's an and it's nothing to do with him as an actor or thing. It's a terrible character. He's the best part of that movie. Oh, he was terrible. The best thing to come out of it. I did not. You know, the only thing I'm. So I was confused about that. I didn't like I would I, I, a plot hole, if you will. Was an explanation with the tie between what I'm assuming, let's say Dracula and and Buffy of the, like the there was like some connection between them of why it wasn't like time to kill her yet. And like what the, the mythology behind the relationship with everything it was just it was messy it oh, was yeah, never really, answered was, and i'm really like messy but this is kind of a poignant thing of like what happened when they all met together of, of like why what was happening why was it not time to kill her yet like what are you trying to do here yeah. um and i i, I well, that was the thing that, that really was that was me. the thing that was painful when like they were like they had that that meeting and they were all like in trance with each other yeah right? and like he's like going after and donna sutherland shows up and was like no not this one not now <laughs> right, right? like like that was that was like what yeah oh yeah like it, it's it's a messy film that's why i still think paul rubin's character is the best in the thing because <laughs> it's just like he's the most vampire out of everyone that's in there that's a vampire <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I do. Um, I did get swept up in the romance of this, though. You're getting swept up. You're getting old. I know. The romance is going to get you. I, I had to sing that once in my head first, and then now I can continue on. <laughs> um, he's gorgeous, though. How could you not get swept up into that? Luke Perry? Yes. I'm just saying, um, but it's like it's the epitome of of like stereotypical like you know you have the bad boy but he has this like soft side, soft side. and and he turns out to be a really nice guy and the the you know originally good looking like popular quote unquote nice guy is just a jerk face yeah and like <laughs> just a jerk face but she I mean, because Can't she was keeping it PG thirteen. <laughs> Um, so then, you know, still being able to still able to have this like edgier side of her. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 
that's I, I got swept up into all of that. No, that's good. That's so. good. Uh, I, I know kiddo was just like, I can't believe you made me watch this. And I was like, yeah, but you know what? You have to appreciate bad movies to. Uh, you have to experience bad movies to appreciate good movies. To appreciate good movies. Yeah. yeah. Because otherwise, it's just like, you know, what's the point, right? Because then then you'll see something that's a good movie, but it's it's a bad, like, you know, like, yeah. it's like. Well, yeah, exactly. And I think that's my biggest gripe with, say, modern reviews. We've said this many times on here, I think. <laughs> Fine, I won't say it. No, no, Go no. Go find it on the other podcasts. <laughs> wasn't saying stop talking and not other podcasts slurpy mcgee (laughs) yeah how'd that go for you karma's a bitch modern reviewers i find that i don't think a lot of them have actually spent a lot of time to watch truly bad films yeah so that when they see something that maybe isn't the best you know, they are just like, oh, this is crap. And it's like, well, no, it, so, it's it's a mid range movie that you're watching. It's not a it's not a it's not a, a two. It's a five. You know, someone needs to go watch like Meet the Feebles. Yes. I think everyone needs to experience that once. Yes. You might think it's very odd of me. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you know, you know. Uh, uh, so, yeah, Buffy uh, watched it. Product of time. <laughs> holy holy moly not the best movie but wasn't angry about watching it no nope. so and i think i think too i ended up actually watching a couple episodes of the first season of buffy the show mm. when you were at um yoga mm. and it's it's a product of its time too right yeah. like you can totally feel the 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 weight the yeah. weighted age that it had so uh, all on Disney Plus, at least up here in Canada. Mm-hmm. So then we checked out Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. Oh, yes. We needed something to be on in the background uh, while we did some like final prep for, for Halloween movies and something we'd seen before. And we also want Halloween costumes. Halloween costumes. Um, we also wanted something that gory had monster vampires in it. Yes, because we've we've had a lot of like tame drama vampires <laughs> or romantic vampires. So we wanted gory, bloody monster vampires, and we figured this is ridiculous enough. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, we hadn't I, I we hadn't watched it for so long and uh kind of fit the bill for it. Yeah. Um the Secret Life of Abraham Lincoln, alternate history version. Yes, alternate history. What are you talking about? This was this was historical fact. Oh yes, yes, yes. This is what happened. I wonder if there's actually people out there that believe that. Why not? They believe worse, more ridiculous things. Why not believe this? <laughs> the Union was formed over the fight of vampires for a vampire <laughs> army that lived in the South. <laughs> It wasn't actually slavery. Like, it was that probably there's probably people that believe that. <laughs> Rule that. Oh shit. <laughs> See, the South wasn't fighting over slavery. It was fighting over the vampires. They just wanted to be free to be themselves. <laughs> Anyways, we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. Um, Abraham Lincoln. Drink this beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. It's like it. Well, obviously, it's based on a story. A story. <laughs> most most things are based on stories. <laughs> I have. I swear, I've only drank <laughs> half of this beer. Um, it's based on a story. <laughs> no, really. Do tell more. And this story is about <laughs> Abraham Lincoln fighting vampires. <laughs> That's the podcast. That's and the review. Mic drop. It's about. <laughs> okay. Whew. Deep breath. I'm really curious to see where you're going with this. I was stop telling me that and I'm going to be able to get back on track here. What I was trying to say 
was it feels like a comic book on screen mm. in the ridiculousness and some of the shots and everything. It feels like it's trying to be grandiose, like some action comic book. That was somehow what I was going to say. And the other thing came out. <laughs> So, um, but it, you know, it starts early on with him when he's very, very young and it's cause it also, of course, then is heavily based on the actual history of Abe Lincoln, um, you know, and, and his connection of course, to, um, the emancipation proclamation and, and anti-slavery and everything like that. So it's showing him, um, being very empathetic and, you know, the idea that everyone is created equal, um, from a very early age. Yeah. And then, then you just, then you're adding in the fact that some of these terrible people that he had dealings with when he was younger and run-ins were actually vampires. Yeah. And so they're just changing that up. Right. Yeah. Um, but the vampires in this are definitely monstrous. They have all sorts of crazy yeah, like shark teeth. teeth. Yeah. They're not just fangs. Like they're like, monstrous shark mouths yeah uh that that come out right so um but i love how he gets like this the the, the my one of my favorite scenes though is the crazy strength that he gets when he's learning how to chop with this, this <laughs> axe and you know that that he's he's being told that this the the truth you know, you, you flow truth through you and that's like, that's the superhuman strength. And he's able to chop down this massive tree in, in one go. And it's like, it's bringing in all this like lore in it as well. And it's just like, it's so over the top in the scene and it's just gloriously ridiculous. It's like if Dragon Ball Z was Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> yes. He just like charges up. Just powers up. And just, you know. Yeah. And then he goes about his life. He just seems all mild matter. But when he fights those vampires, <laughs> <laughs> truth will prevail. Just waiting for like the the aura to fill around right. him. Right. Uh, so I I remember reading this book uh and loving it mm -hmm. because the book The story that it's based on. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> the historical fiction that it was is based is, is a lot more dramatic. Yeah. And it's it's interesting because like the movie changes a lot, adds characters, creates all these things that are. are oh, it added characters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's never a huge big run in with the, the master. Oh, right? OK. It's it's like just the overlying kind of like idea, but like for the Hollywood story that was created, even though the 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 movie was written by the same guy that wrote the book, the the book is like the movie is like the is still like almost a bastardized version of the book, huh? It it was it's like whatever it takes to get it on screen. Yeah, yeah, basically okay. that's that's what it feels like. Like they so they felt that they needed an they actual, needed a like, big baddie, a big bad guy, a face to it. They needed they needed that that lead up to the big baddie, right? And uh, so it is vastly different from. So if you've seen the movie and you're like, wow, this is weird and kind of crappy, the novel is way better <laughs> <laughs> and it, like leaps and bounds better, like. Uh, for writing wise and all that because most of his books have been better than anything he's done for screen oh okay right yeah so like even pride pedagogists and zombies mm -hmm. right the book is better than the the i wouldn't mind actually probably reading that book only because i i did enjoy the movie yeah. um but it wasn't like absolutely amazing i think it was just different yeah. um also i have never read pride and prejudice it was so start with pride so and zombies, why right? not want, start with ppz and that that's my experience with it i'm like okay yeah. well this is fine you know so <laughs> it's like it was like the when he was doing these these changes up and that that spurred a whole genre of 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 like re and re and the classic the literature getting transformed into monsters yeah for a while like i remember when i was working in the bookstore and like all these things started showing up and it's like Ah, what weird little trend for the moment yeah uh but um yeah it's definitely bombastic of a film bombastic like, exactly. there's a, there's a lot of things within this movie where you're watching and like the slow-mo and the changes like it's 
it it felt dated. Mm -hmm. It really did feel it, dated. Well, and it's yeah. not that old of a movie. Yeah. It's from... I gotta look it up. No, it's fine. But I'm pretty sure Kiddo was alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and it, with just, yeah, the shots that he did, the bombastic insanity of it all. Um, and... It's it's mainly the shots that feel make it feel dated, mm -hmm. you know. Um, especially though that whole final scene with the bridge, and I do really love the fake out that they have on the train. It has a odd amount of satisfaction, especially you know like thinking that the guy double crosses him and mm -hmm. didn't, and like there's a weird amount sense of of relief and excitement there. Um, twenty twelve. So yeah, he was. It's, you know, it's only ten years old. Yeah. Damn, it did not age well. It, it felt more like an early, maybe at least 20 years old, early 2000s movie. Yes, very much so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, with the the <laughs> the, the bridge oh. collapsing and they're running on it as it's falling and oh. somehow they're not falling off of this thing like they're superheroes. It was just. Brutal. And it makes no sense. Brutal. But. Um, yeah, because it's directed by um, Tamir. Tamir? But calm. I can't say it. Your You're favorite part of the segment, when Mike and Katie can't say names. <laughs> Beckin Men Betov. That doesn't even sound like something that you might be able to possibly recognize. Tamir Bekmambetov. You're right. Bekmambetov. Bekmambetov. But he is... is huh? Huh? He's Russian. Yeah. Bekmambetov. I like it. So yeah, he did like Night Watch and Day Watch. He was also the one that did Wanted. Mm. Right? So like very stylized. Yeah. Uh, That's a movie that I remember really enjoying. And I wouldn't mind actually watching it for Radnesia. Yeah. Because I'm curious if older Wiser Wiser Katie will be as <laughs> nearly as enthralled with it as she was then. That was another one though that is like so off script from the the right? source I, material. Yeah, cuz I know you really enjoyed that, right? But that we should add that to our list because I am very curious to see cuz I remember being like this is amazing. <laughs> and I have a sneaking suspicion I will not feel that same <laughs> way now. Something, just something, Spidey sense Something's, telling me you're not going to think it's as cool. Um, because I, I also won't have like a soft spot of nostalgia for it. Yeah. I just, you know. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I didn't remember that Anthony Mackie was in this movie. I didn't remember that either. Yeah. Uh, and and that's proof, though, that it couldn't be that old because he's not that much younger. No, no, no. You know? Right, like I remember Dominic Cooper being in it, right? Who's Dominic Cooper? Harry Sturgis. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. Played preacher, preacher and yeah. Like he I was, just... he was in the MCU too, right? Like, yeah. Okay. So, but yeah. Like there's some some decent people in there that we know for sure, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it was, it was. It was I there. I think the scene that really kills it me is when he finally gets to go after the vampire that kills his family. Mm -hmm. And like the first time or the. Yeah, the first, OK. Uh -huh. And they're in the stampede. Oh, yeah. Oh, with God, the, that's terrible. With the horses. The it, it's so bad looking where they're like running through the stampede of horses and then they're running on the backs of the stampede the horses, the horses that never end too yeah yeah it's the stampede There's like a that thousand never horses ends. and they just keep because they're running back through the stampede and yet it keeps going on and yeah and then they jump on top of the horses and are jumping between the horses. and then the vampire throws a horse at him oh, and he God. lands on the horse and it rolls and then he just and he gets up and starts running. riding it fuck yes I forgot about that. I was just like, holy shit, that just happened. Did he just catch that horse and start riding it? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yes. Yes, he did. Right? Because he's Abraham fucking Lincoln. See? 
<laughs> just blew the, oh my goodness the, the, but like but yeah you, yeah it was such a bad looking scene well and then because then they would get close to them and you can just see the green screen of the horses behind them yeah you know it's it's terrible yeah it it definitely it did not age well no i cannot believe it's only 10 years old yeah <laughs> But if you want to have such a very exciting, ridiculous time, still go but watch it. It is ridiculous. Like it, it has not a lot of weight and substance to it. So yeah, there's some cool scenes, like when he's like wielding his axe in in like the master's chamber, and mm-hmm. it's like this like kung fu action, like Abraham Lincoln with this because he's got slicing this massive, and dicing massive axe that he's just flying around yeah. right so there is yeah some cool action when they're taking them out yeah. like that right but it yeah it was like definitely a, a, a another one of those product of his time i thought it was interesting too though that kind of sad because then it goes like once it gets into the civil war like every politician they age rapidly um, and he goes from being like, there's so much of it as, as your more youth. And then like civil war is happening. And then it's like, all of a sudden he's ancient and barely moving. <laughs> and it's like, on my deathbed. Yeah. Um, then literally, you know, going off to, to the end. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just, it just happens so quickly. Right. He goes from this like spry fighting, you know, full of, you know, yeah, it's, uh, it's like all of a sudden, oh crap, we got to catch up to real history now. Right. <laughs> Let's do this now. <laughs> Suddenly Lincoln wasn't jacked and insane with an axe. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Abraham Lincoln, vampire hunter. Go read the book. The time is here. The time for the last Twilight movie review is upon us. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Okay, so. Yes, I was excited to finish the series off because I had made it this far and it was like the culmination of all of this. A month's hard work. Finally was going to happen. I mean, this is hours of my life I have put to this. (laughs) So the original plan was just to watch Breaking Dawn Part 1. But the way the, the night played out, Mike was still work late and I just decided to keep going. So I watched them all in one go. One and two, back to back, hours and hours of Twilight. That's like four hours. It was four hours. <laughs> it was. Okay, so the very exciting, like, wedding was upon us. <laughs> so Breaking Dawn Part 1 starts with the wedding. It starts with really awkward wedding. So... <laughs> <laughs> because Edward's sister is like super over the top planning like the perfect wedding way over what they care about at all like they do, they go insane everything and of course I'm thoroughly impressed though that you had vampires and humans all in the same place and there was no incidents at all which was very impressive um, what I thought so comments on said wedding um her dad just looked like he wanted to kill Edward all night. Um, well, how old is she? She just graduated. She's there. She's 18. OK. Um, we can't judge. Um, no, I. <laughs> <laughs> He's only 150, but hey, you know. <laughs> um, and think of like how much like where he has been like for him to like want to actually settle down after that long and been like hitting it well it's it's still funny so in the the whole scheme of things like he talks about feeling so connected with her as if like this is the person that i've been waiting for it doesn't explain how that's possible like why like I know you don't need to have a necessarily a reason opposed to like, say the werewolves that talk about imprinting on people, but why is it that he found this, this mate? Now I know part of the reason why he talks about loving being around her so much is the fact that he can't read her mind. So that's a big thing for him because it's the only one that he doesn't know what's happening. So it's calming to him, I think. 
Oh yeah, well if you could read so, your spouse's mind at every moment, that just it would like, be terrible. Really, yeah, it would be. Yeah, right. Um, so I th- I think it's like this weird. I think I drive you crazy enough with how much I want toys. Could you imagine what would like if you could read how much my brain is thinking? About I, toys? I would never want to, either one of us to read our minds all the time. It would be terrible. Um, so well, yours is more dangerous than mine. <laughs> um, so then. I lost my train of thought. Sorry. He didn't. Oh, yeah. So that's why. Because so being with her. Right. Um, But one thing that I thought was interesting, because, you know, we we laughed from the very beginning of the weird, awkward glances back and forth. Right. And and I kind of like by the end of this movie, the the, we're just going to call it collectively Breaking Dawn. um, Bella either is she very, really smiles. Yeah. She's either looks disgusted or looks turned on. <laughs> There's very little in between. Just being happy is not really a thing she does. Yeah. So so she's she's gets walks, you know, walking down the aisle. She keeps talking about how excited she is. Like she never once shows like cold feet about anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, Edward is actually the one that's telling her, like, you could still back out. Like, because this is the idea that you know, his part of the her part of the bargain is I'll marry you and then he'll turn me. So he doesn't want to turn her into a vampire. So it's like and then one of his sisters is keep trying to tell talk her out of it and all this sort of stuff. Right. And so she gets to she sees him and instead of like any sort of happy at all, she looks so like nauseous almost. <laughs> there's no joy. There's no like there's nothing. And I'm like. This is supposed to be all super romantic, and this is making me uncomfortable looking at your face. <laughs> um, so that like set the tone for the first little bit. I'm like, this is not no. Um, but then all of a sudden, then she's there, and then then she's suddenly happy, and then they like full on make out after the damn thing. So it's like, see, it's either miserable or horny. And yeah. and they have like the world's longest kiss where I'm like thinking if I was in the audience, I'd be like, oh, my God, get a room. This is way too much. Um, so awkward vampire wedding. See, and, and her her high school friends are there and they're seeing the the family. They the the Collins had brought down their cousins from Alaska <laughs> and uh, they uh, they all look like models and, and all the, the kids her friends are just like, what kind of gene pool are they from? Like these, these people are all perfect looking. Like, yeah. So I thought it was quite funny that, you know, some of a few of these things where they all have to behave themselves, but uh, you know, that there was actually no problems, but um, Edward actually did um, invite Jacob and Jacob did end up showing up after the wedding, but it was off in the, the side of the forest basically he had been because it starts with them the very beginning of the movie starts with invites going out and jacob gets an invite and he just takes off so apparently since the time of the invite to the wedding he'd been running around northern canada okay um and so he had just shown up (laughs) right um uh, and yeah he had just disappeared and uh so he had showed up and he was Everything was doing great between them. They were like, she's, he's like, you know what? Fine. You know what? You're happy. I'm cool with you. Blah, blah, blah. She's happy. Everything's great. Edward's cool with it. Everything's fine. Until, until she says that, you know, uh, oh, he's like, oh, it's my last time I get to hug you as a human. And he's, she's like, oh, not quite yet. I'm not turning night tonight. Uh, we're still going to have a honeymoon. But he's going to turn you first, right? No, I want I'm, my honeymoon still going to be like every other normal honeymoon. And basically like, yeah, no, we're totally going to have sex before I'm turned. And Jacob just freaking loses it. He's so angry. And then he just takes off again. <laughs> and so it was just like, oh, my God, the drama, the 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 he's just. Oh, my goodness. He got off on his motorcycle <laughs> and left. But instead of a motorcycle, he turned into a wolf. Right. And uh, so then you find out that she's going on this honeymoon that no one she doesn't know where she's going. It's supposed to be the surprise, like um, which, you know, basement in New Jersey made made her her dad, the cop, real happy to not know where she was going. Right. Um, So then they they, it shows them they take off and it shows them uh, going there in Rio and just walking through Rio. And you find out that it was just a pit stop for things. And and then they end up going to this. They have a private island, basically, that they were given from from their dad, from his dad. And um, an amazing little retreat. 
and they're planning to be there for for weeks and a couple weeks actually a minimum was i think it shows um i mean phenomenal bedroom with the the door right onto the beach and the water and everything like that and um so then we have the first awkward like simulated sex scene i guess really it shows them first being like that literally the first time she's ever been naked she walks out to the ocean he's out there and like that's that's their like thing so it was like this is this is awkward this isn't romantic this is just awkward you know and um simulated sex scene so then they they have um she's she's all happy um but then the next morning he's all guilty feeling and Mm. apparently she's quite bruised um Mm. from him and yes, she didn't, he managed not to full on bite her or kill her like Jacob was worried. So good job, Edward. But um, she's she's quite bruised. Um, nothing this, wrong with some bruises, but these these came out around the same time as uh, Abraham Lincoln. Oh, well, this is a good period in <laughs> cinematic history. Um, and uh, so she is super happy and he's just mortified. So it was yeah. it was like when she, her for her, it was when can we do this again? And for him, it's like this is never happening ever again. I could have killed you. This was terrible. Right. Like so they're back to square one of like, I can't do this. And uh, so then from then on, then it's just them. It's just like a montage of them hanging out and doing all. And then she's she keeps uh, taunting him wearing like lingerie and everything and so it was kind of cute at the same time because she's trying really hard to, mm-hmm. to flirt with him about it and well then she finally like creepily begs and pleads for him to have sex with her again <laughs> um and so he he gives into this and then it shows it shows the next morning he had gone off to um off to uh oh they're at one point they, they have um housekeepers show up so there's housekeepers that are local locals there that were acting all very skittish around around them and everything and he's she's like they seem to know who you, what you are and because they're all worried about her and so they keep checking on her to make sure that she's still alive so they know about them being vampires mm. but um he's like you know they have basically local lore about about vampires so there's like a little bit of a connection with that okay cool so then one of the mornings she wakes up and it's weird she goes into the fridge and she starts eating chicken and peanut butter and something else and i'm like what the fuck is she i was like she look it looks like the stereotypical are you pregnant cravings right Mm -hmm. like well this doesn't make any sense though she's just she didn't have sex at all until a couple weeks how long has it been on this magical island like and it has only been a couple weeks yeah and and it was like that day she can start feeling actual stuff stuff in on her on her stomach. Mm-hmm. So then they go and they actually bring back the 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 local who's wondering to kind of try to help her out. And she basically determines that yes, she's she's pregnant. Yeah. Um, because it's and it's rapidly growing. So they basically bring her back home. They don't tell her family, they tell her that it's been extended, that she's sick, and um and she's actually there. Well, she starts just getting all sickly and she's growing, growing, growing. And it's just like, you know, pregnancy on speed and it's draining her life force. And so they're worried because they don't know anything about it. I mean, it's obviously part vampire. And of course, they don't know any lore and any of the lore that you try to find out is just um, totally demonic and terrifying. Well, then the werewolves find out about this and they're basically like, if if it is what we think it is, it's going to like, it's going to risk human humans. And we're supposed to be protecting them. So we have to kill this thing. And if we have to kill her in the process, so be it, but it's more important to make sure we get, so now the, the werewolves are all against them and uh, causing problems. Well, then this creates a rift with Jacob. And now that's why he breaks from the pack is that he's trying to protect Bella with all this sort of stuff. So he's there, he's finding out about it and he knows what's going on. And Edward keeps trying and Jacob are trying to convince her to abort the baby because it's killing her. And she's holding on and saying, well, everything's fine. Like everything's going to be great. Even though she looks like cancer patient or something like that, she's all emaciated. And so they eventually find out that they try, they give her blood Because they're wondering if it's half vampire, if maybe that's part of the issue of why it's making her sick. And so she ends up drinking blood and it actually helps her a lot. Um, So it's really the entire movie 
from then on, though, is just her dealing with the pregnancy. And it's only maybe a month or two type thing. Like, it's at the very Mm. most. Time is not really explained. Mm. Um, But she's just getting more sick and more sick. And it's just getting harder on her. And they're basically... Her feeling is, if I'm going to... If this is eventually going to kill me, then we'll just wait to the last possible moment. You can change me into a vampire right then and everything will be great. Um, But I'm not going to kill the baby if I don't have to. Well, then. Mr. Collins trying to explain to her, like, I it's not like you have an illness, like your body is actually falling apart. I don't know if changing you to a vampire will actually save you. You know, your heart's going to fail because it is depleting all of your nutrition. Um. I might not be able to bring you back. So that's, it's this, this constant struggle. And, but then all of a sudden Edward's able to, um, oh, he can pick up the thoughts of the baby one day. And that's what changes his mind is he can actually start hearing it, um, Mm. have have thoughts and that it's saying that he likes the, they like the voice and it's comforting. So it's like it become a person to him suddenly. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, well then fine. You know, it is what it is. And I hope everything's going to be fine. Um, but you know, we just keep moving on. So like, that's all this movie was, was that, well, then you get to the end and, uh, you know, in the middle of all this, Jacob is struggling because now he's broken from the pack. He's defied the alpha. He tells him he's not going to listen to him anymore. I don't listen to anyone because technically Jacob was supposed to be alpha. He is the grandson of the last uh, one of the chiefs, mm-hmm. but he turned down being alpha and that's why sam is alpha because he didn't want to do it so then he's kind of realizing like oh that was probably dumb um and i really should do that and so he has a couple people that kind of defected and stayed with him and so he's up against the the pack as well and uh so then fast forward she is going to now she's going to labor and they basically it's uh i can't even remember what happened but either way they had to do a c-section for her because um, to get it out of her because it was starting to, it was because it was crushing her ribs and everything. Cause it was growing so fast. Mm. It was just her body didn't have a chance yeah. to react to it. Right. And um, so they do a C-section and she starts bleeding out and she basically dies on the table because Mr. Collins wasn't there. He was out trying to hunt and it's just all things going wrong. Yeah. And, but the baby's fine. Um, you had a moment where you think one of his siblings is going to eat it. Um, but then she like turns all motherly and is super attached to it and is taking care of it. Cause I was really afraid that she was, I was like, this is how it's going to end where, you know, she goes through all of this and the baby just gets eaten the first time it's born. Cause now you have a human <laughs> blood, right? I mean, you know, all the blood everywhere. It's like sharks. Right. And, uh, so here she is bleeding out and dying and, Edward is biting her all over the place and took a vial of his, um, what did he refer to it as? Venom? It was like, it looked like mercury. It was, it was silver sparkle. Where did the silver sparkle come from? How did they get that out of them? <laughs> I don't understand it. It's like, that's the blood that was drawn because that then when you break their heads, they are marble. Like, I don't understand where the silver goo came from. <laughs> <laughs> Well, (laughs) do we need to explain this? (laughs) When a boy vampire. (laughs) Well, because I mean, like when you would bite a vampire, when you bite the vampire bites them. Like, do they actually excrete it from their teeth? Is that what they're saying? Like snakes or what? Like, so that's a whole nother question. There there is a lot to question in this series. It also sparkles. Um, Oh, (laughs) what? Sparkles. It, it, it could sparkle. It could sparkle. You know, no matter what light you're in. <laughs> um, so he takes this huge syringe of this thing and he stabs her right in the heart, basically, with it. Well, um, she's dead. And <laughs> <laughs> she's, well, she's dead. Well, she's um, dead. Which was like really terrible. I'm like, they, I know she can't die, but I don't understand like what's going to happen here. Um what you know i'm just and so it it was hard because it took a lot of the like the 
drama out of it because at the same time it went on for so long Mm -hmm. and you knew that she was going to come back because since I know it's a part one of something too, (laughs) right? Um, Well. And uh, so more of the drama came of like, is the child going to survive? Is it going to be a demon? You know, stuff like that. And so the vampires, I mean, the werewolves now are like, oh my God, this thing is like, we have to kill this thing now. And so they're converging on the house and suddenly Jacob goes in and he goes and he sees the kid and all of a sudden he, he like stops and he has all these visions. He stares into his eyes and has all these visions of her growing up. And you can totally see that it looks a lot like Bella. Um, it kind of like morphs and expands from the eyes. So it's like very clear, like this is her growing up. Um, and it's showing different versions of her and, and then he stops and apparently he has now imprinted on this little baby Renesme. What a name, Renesme. And Renesme? Uh, Renesme. Um, it's like two names in one. It is. It's Renee, Renee and Esme. Yeah. It's the mom's Renesme. Mm-hmm. A poor child. Yeah. And uh, so. Because of this rule of imprinting and what had happened, he goes out to face the werewolves and there um, Edward goes out there and he realizes that he's imprinted on him and he reads the thoughts of the werewolves. And essentially their number one rule that cannot be broken is to not hurt and cause harm to anyone that the wolves have imprinted on. So she is safe because he has imprinted on her. And so it's supposed to be the idea of it's not necessarily the married or a love interest like it had shown. It could be like a brother and a protector and something like that. So we're going to go with that version of it, because otherwise the rest of it is really too creepy. (laughs) Um, Couldn't have you. I can have your daughter. Sounds creepy. Um, (laughs) So. uh, (laughs) Yep. Oh, Um, that's. So, so in the, there's, there's that. And then in the meanwhile, then they start preparing basically Bella for a funeral. So they're preparing her body and cleaning her all up and putting a dress on her and getting her all prepared for the coffin. Good thing they didn't burn her. Um, because they, then you start seeing on a microbiological level, um, cellular level that she's repairing herself and it has it's they they really had fun with the cg of this and showing ice crystals going through her veins because the whole idea with the cold ones an idea so it shows her freezing from the inside out basically and then repairing all the broken bones and the heart plumps up because she was all gaunt right and it shows her like like ballooning up a little bit to be all like healthy and plump and cheeks are starting to go red and her hair turns. It was it her hair had gone all dark and, and pale. And it's like, so she's it's like recoloring herself. And, um, and so the movie ends focusing on her eyes and all of a sudden they open up and they're red. So that's how part one ends. So then, oh, we're still on part one. Well, that was just part oh, one. Shit. I know. Right. It was like, The longest, it was boring because it was so focused on, like, there was so much extra stuff in there that could have come out. Like, it was definitely very extended to be the movie. It was, it made sense for that stop right there, right? But, like, there was not, you didn't have the romance from the original one. And, like, as much as I complained about the, the triangle of love thing, it was just her looking sickly. And him worrying about her yeah. for most of the movie. I'm like, this is not cool. Like, of course, I don't want her to die. And like, um, so, yeah. So part two starts with her waking up. And I was expecting more like huzzah that she was alive. <laughs> they were just like, oh, cool. You're a vampire now. Awesome. <laughs> I was expecting more huzzah. Like there was no like big grand. Oh my God. I can't believe it type things. Like it was weirdly yeah. chill <laughs> of, I just came back from life. I'm not from death. I'm, I'm not actually dead. Like it was, it was bizarre. And, uh, 
But she was pissed about Jacob imprinting on her daughter. Holy shit. Um, because he, she was, she was angry that he had a connection and was like, so with her, he had been with her 24 seven, basically. Um, I think she was upset that she had missed out on, mm. on some of that. Right. Because by the time she actually sees her, she's already grown. She's not a newborn at all. Right. She's rapidly aging still. Yeah. And, um, but basically they didn't want her to see the daughter right away because being a newborn vampire, they didn't want her to try to eat the daughter. So, so Edward takes her out to go hunting and, um, and so there she's running around and just like, I'm a vampire. This is amazing. <laughs> and seeing all the like speed running and like all the like weird zoom shots of like being able to hear the sounds and everything, like all the stereotypical things of heightened senses. And uh, she's trying to hunt this deer. And like, I could totally be like, I know that this is okay. And she needs to do this, but like the poor deer, like this is going to be terrible. And, uh, and uh, she ends up, she did, oh, then she smelled there was a hiker or a mountain climber nearby. And she totally went all feral. And Edward, he's like, oh my God, I didn't realize there was going to be people out here. And she goes leaping off the cliff and she's trying to go and attack the, the rock climber um, because he had cut his, his leg. And so she smelled the blood and he calmed her down from that and got her to stop trying to attack him. Um so then she goes and finds this bobcat type thing or no, it was a mountain lion that was going after the deer and she attacks the mountain lion instead and just like digs into it. And it was quite intense. And, and it's like, they hadn't shown any of them hunting or eating animals at all, all the other movies. And then all of a sudden it was like head first into this, this mountain lion. It was just like, Oh my goodness. So she's apparently they're all fascinated because she's like got this crazy control uh, for being a newborn vampire. But she went a little nuts with she's really mad at Jacob and all this sort of stuff. And um, so she's definitely like, I'm so happy to be a vampire. This is amazing. And well, then Jacob also ended up showing her dad that he's a werewolf and trying to because Jake, uh, her, her dad still thinks he's dead or she's dead. And uh, so they they show that she is there but they don't tell him about her being a vampire at all. But then they like introduce the family. So it was like all this weird, like introduction of being a vampire stuff. And then all of a sudden it just changes gears. And it was like, okay, yeah, we have this little demon spawn vampire thing that we don't really know what's happening. And she keeps growing. And you find out that the, the worry that the now got reported to the, I was going to say Illuminati. Now I can't remember what they are. Wasn't the, the big bad guys in the, the ruling Voltari. band. Voltari. There we go. Um, see? You, you remembered. Um, they think that it's outlawed to basically turn a child into a vampire. Yeah. Because the they are too much of a risk for exposing the vampire mm, kind. Yeah, yeah. So they think that they had turned a child um, without asking questions, right? So mm-hmm. then they're basically... Because they're afraid that they're not going to um, listen to them at all and they're just going to come in and kill everyone, they start like they spread out and and go across the world and try to find their their uh, their allies. And so now all of a sudden you have this influx of all these characters and like we can find like oh, yeah, worldwide yeah. vampire web. <laughs> That's when I came home. Right? And uh, so it was basically just like, how many different characters of vampires can we add? And these guys have all these different powers. And like, we're totally switching gears and we're going to do all this. And and it's just the great plan for the Volteri to, to go through. And so it's this all big, big span of time, just having them explain what's actually happening and tell the story over and over again and show that she's half immortal and half human. Um uh, and and prove that she's not not immortal, but she still has special powers. And like, oh, it just went over and over and over mm-hmm. again. And then all of a sudden, the Volteri show up, and and they have this like standoff about it. And it shows all these terrible things, and all of these these guys are dying. And I was like, well, this is really shitty. Like, you were so into it too. I was so. You were so like no no no. I was so sad that they were dying because it was like they've gone all this time 
And it's like, okay, well, I kind of expected you're going to have this massive battle. That they were going to make sure that it sucked. Okay, they did die. A few of them, like, I was devastated about, like, really sad. And then you find out that it was just a potential. It was just a vision. Yeah. It was just something that could be. It was going to be what would have happened if the, the head dude didn't change his mind and listen. Yeah. And I was just like, what the fuck? This whole thing never actually happened. <laughs> you were so disappointed. And and as much as I was happy that they were alive, it just took all that weight out of it. Yeah. Right? And so I'm like, okay, I guess everything's fine now. Yeah. And everything was fine now. They basically were like, okay, well, there's no risk here. Let's go home. Mar bad. You know? And so it's like, it it would have been, it was sad that they would have died, but it was also just really heartbreaking that it left all that nothingness there. Like it was yeah. just like, it t- yeah, it was it was almost disappointing because it didn't have that weight of it. It yeah. was like it it I think it continued on with the idea that it was just supposed to be a happy ending and there was no real world weight to it. And I know it is a whole mystical made up world, but it was like too perfect too clean too clean and and it irritated me actually yeah. um which i i thought was quite funny how irritated i actually was that it was a ruse um when i should have been more relieved about yeah. it um but because you know in in that whole scene um their 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 daughter was then t- jacob took the daughter away so that she and it was basically like you're not we don't know where she's going to be um so we can protect Mm. her from it and everything um you know one thing that was interesting that you did find out amongst their whole like training montage that basically uh, bella's she does have a power in the fact that she is a shield so that's why edward couldn't Mm -hmm. hear your thoughts and everything is she can actually project the shield which like somehow she's got like jedi powers that can like envelop people now suddenly and so it was like it was just the first part of of Breaking Dawn was so strung out and, and focused on so much of the story. And there was so much going on in the second part. And yes, there are definitely different focuses for mm-hmm. the movies, but it was just a lot happening. And it was so different than the originals. And, you know, they have her growing up. She's apparently there. They found um, it, it brought it back to the, the legendary people like that were in Brazil and everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I wish I wish I could see your they could see your face right now. You just look like I am literally boring you to death. It's hilarious. It is. It is like 11 o'clock at night. Um, I know. But still, like eyes are half open. Uh, sure, dear. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, but they they do actually have they had met another one like this. So he basically grew up to be a young, the perfect age of young adulthood <laughs> and then just stopped aging. So he was 150 years old, but looked like he was, you know, 18 again. So, yeah. you know, the mystical. Why, why not grow till you're 30 or something, you know, or whatever. But. Uh, so they're like, OK, everything's going to be fine. We know what she is now. Everything's wonderful. And, um, you know, yeah, everyone just goes off. They just disappear. They all just leave. It was very anticlimactic. Right. Like even like I was all excited for the Volteri to actually fall. Um, the, the Dracula boys that wanted to take them down. Um, we're just so sad. There was not a fight. And they're like, this was dumb of you to not take them down. Like, yeah. Um, but I guess we'll leave now. And that's all it was. And they all just went back to their lives and everything was great. And mm-hmm. like, it was just like, there should have been more. And I, I'm, I'm happy that they have a family that they're going to be together with and everything. And, you know, Jacob, apparently now they have a guard dog, literally. Um, but, you know, I'm glad that he's at peace because now he can finally move on. Uh, let, let Bella go. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was just, I think I always envisioned it to be such a romance 
And as much as it was still about their love and their connection, it had lost that yeah. aspect of it. And I don't know if I was okay with it. I mean, it was really corny, but it was just, yeah, I, I, I am sad that I was so excited for it. And there was, there was some decent, but overall it ended with some, some definite lackluster. Like I was expecting it to get so much better in the second yeah. the final breaking dawn. Like that was going to be the thing. The, the... <laughs> and it wasn't, um, the thing. And I know that you also were just like, why are you making me watch this? <laughs> no, no. Like I got home late. And so then I was, you know, like, well, no, no sense. And he had 45 minutes left. Like no sense in turning off. Maybe we'll just finish it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was just like, I was like, well, at first when like that action scene was going on, I was like, man, if this had been rated R, it could have been some cool shit. Like all those people exploding and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, then when, there was some really good action. Then it right? was like, then it became, then it became just all a dream, basically. And it was like, well, hold up. Like, well, what I really liked was when they split the, the, the ground open and there was full on magma flows down and they were falling into the giant ravine. That was hilarious. So that was the merch that then showed up, which was funny on the Hot Topic Instagram page that showed it was a little uh, rift of them and I was just like, hi, I know what that means now. It's like I feel like I'm part of the no. <laughs> You're club. in the no. I'm in the no now. You can so. go buy yourself a Twilight t shirt and some bracelets. You know what? Maybe I will just to spite you. <laughs> Be like, yeah, fucking right. I'm wearing Twilight merch. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no, I don't think wow. I will. Wow. Because I don't know if I I I I I I I know I'm not Team Jacob because he was really irritating me with how much he was like so obsessed yeah but i can't really say i'm firmly team edward wow i mean you're team three-way i can neither confirm nor deny because that just seems strange but interesting (laughs) team edward jacob i can think of a funny name for it sorry No, no team Ed Wob? No, that yeah. sounds terrible. Yeah, Team Ed Wob. Oh, yeah, it's like a like a like a surgical swipe. <laughs> Just you go get you go get Ed Wob down at the. Oh, God. Where are we Ed Wobbing me? Wherever you want, baby. <laughs> but you want Team Ed Wob now? Oh goodness. Oh. Well, the other option is Jake or Jake. Edward. No, why are we doing Jake any of this? Ard? Jake. Ja- Jack. How about just team all Jack the boys? Ard. All the boys. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay. Well, it was just team the boys, just didn't the, really. The boys. <laughs> didn't give, the boys. give it enough clarity, right? So. Team um, D A B O Y Z. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, and on that ridiculousness. Um, yeah. So, like, so, in this whole grand scheme of things, how, how did part one and part two stack up to one, two, and three? What was your favorite of all four? Hmm. Probably the third one. I think. New moon. Yeah. Not no eclipse. 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 So total eclipse of the heart. I also had to sing that one for a second. Yes. Um. I think I think that was probably my favorite one. I was. Really sad. I was expecting, like, because it had gotten to that, and I'm like, okay, so Breaking Dawn is going to be even better, right? I'm sad that it wasn't. I, I don't know why I feel so disappointed. Mm. I'm curious I why one friend who is a Twilight fan, I'm curious to then talk and be like, am I missing something? And what, why it was supposed to be better? Was because it wasn't even like the wedding wasn't even that satisfying, you know? Um, hmm. It was it was strange. I don't know why. Maybe the demon baby really bothered me. I don't know what it is, but uh, um, yeah. So I would I would say the third one um, was probably my favorite. Okay. But uh, I uh, I'm not disappointed that I watched them. I feel like I was like now 
in the know for a part mm. of history. But I also don't feel I would ever watch them again. That's fair. Because I feel like it's done. Yeah. Um, I I don't feel like I'm with I I'm never gonna be like, I really wanna relive that moment again. I don't foresee that happening. <laughs> so Twilight, I finished it, man. <laughs> I did this. <laughs> I don't know what it gets me. Where's my gold star accomplishment? <laughs> you you got that. You got yeah. that. Oh, I did. I, 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 you know, I'm slightly proud of you for sticking through it because I don't think I could have done it. Oh, I know you couldn't have. You would have fallen asleep in every single one of them. <laughs> Guaranteed. I'm, maybe so. I need my beauty. So oh, then. yeah. Yeah. Um, so what's next, Mike? Black Panther. How exciting! New movies! Right? And then it's rapidly running quickly into Christmas, so I don't it know. It feels like Christmas already, though. Like, the um, snow is... We we had, like, snow falling the other day, which is weird. It's been, like, in the negatives. It's, it's like, cold. It's we bitter. went from 35-degree weather to, like, a week later, it's negative 3. Like... Yeah. I don't even with like a wind chill of like negative 17 or something like that. Like, it is not that bad, but he's walking outside. So I understand it was terrifying. But I like could not feel anything. I could not feel feelings anymore. No, I was. <laughs> um, no, it, it, has, it was like it was, in my it soul. The cold. Quite, a, quite a snap. Right. So um, but I mean, the, the schedule, the, the calendar is just quickly. I, I cannot believe I'm looking, looking at like work meetings and all this work stuff I have. And I'm like. Oh my goodness, I only have a few weeks before Christmas. Like, mm-hmm. it's just flying by. And uh, so I know we have a few things coming up of, you know, family time. So, um, trying to do our best to make sure we come back here. We definitely will be doing Black Panther, of course, and uh, seeing kind of some extra fluffy movies before uh, some more holiday excitement starts and we can find some fun and crappy Christmas movies. How exciting! Right? So, thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a wonderful day. And remember, stay rad. Stay rad.